Towards Understanding with Clayton B. Ellen values being a positive radio program for everyone. As we present today's episode, please accept this little ears warning. Some of the themes discussed may not be suitable for children. Everything you think about when it comes to a hard rocker, Brian's pretty much led. Welcome to the Towards Understanding podcast. Brian Head Welch is my guest from the band Corn. He's going to share about life and faith. Uh, yeah, I said faith and, you know, Corn in the same sentence. Uh, it is a remarkable opportunity to hear his story. Uh, if you do love this podcast, please like, share, rate, review. Uh, it helps us get it out to more and more people. That's the way that algorithms work. Uh, I had a chat with Brian a little while ago now at a conference we were at uh, face-to-face, and so the audio sounds a little bit different from studio quality. Do enjoy this conversation with Brian Head Welch from the band Corn. Where did music start for you? What was the, the, the drive for you that said, I want to be a part of music I, uh, and get to a place of Corn? Was it something always a part of your world growing up? My mom is like, have you heard of the Brady Bunch? Yep. My mom was like Mrs. Brady. She was just, you know, really innocent and and... And uh, just like, you know, kind of like that. And and so, but one Christmas, she bought me an album. And I put it on my record player Christmas morning, and it went, back in black, I hit the sack. And that was ACDC, and I was hooked. So my mom was like a really big uh, uh, catalyst in getting me into heavy metal. Yeah. I don't, ever, I don't ever remember Mrs. Brady in the TV show doing that for Greg, though. No, nope, so, not know, at all. Not at all. I love Mrs. Brady. <laughs> um, as we look through, whether it's um, you know reading about your journey, uh, we look in and see in this you know, documentary film as well, uh, part of the, the remarkable rise that you had in the band Corn and, and the, the incredible fame that you, you were exposed to and understood, the, yeah. the joy of music that went from that sort of understanding of music to actually playing music and being a part of it, and then uh, heading into addiction. Uh, what were, was the things that you were actually addicted to as you, you went through? Can you, you list what it was? There was a few things going on, right? Oh, yeah. Um, just take out heroin and put in every other drug on the planet. And No, it was like uh, it was pills, it was Vicodin, it was Xanax, it was Percocets. It was, uh, you know, things like that. And then it was cocaine, methamphetamine. Um, that's pretty much it. I didn't really like pot for some reason. So, it was, oh, alcohol too, yeah. but mainly beer because I didn't like to to get drunk real fast. I like the gradual, you know, t- thing of beer would, uh, you can gradually get drunk so sounds sort of miraculous you're even still alive right yeah 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 and i say that with uh um i don't know i just uh it's not like i'm bragging about it it's just how it was and i'm very thankful that i got past that as i was uh reading up about your story watching various interviews you've done whatever it might be i was trying to understand where did the the desire for addiction come from um, mm-hmm. And I went, you know, uh, we, we hear the stories of, you know, rockers sort of getting into this world and, and this is what it is. But it seems to be unfulfilling just to say it's it's a lifestyle part of it. Um, as I sort of was reading, I, I it felt like it had something to do with the loneliness or a connection to people or maybe something mixed in there. Am, am I even close to it? Do you know where that addictive sort of lifestyle came from deep in you? Um, I think one of the main things is just for pleasure and it brings people to feel something else rather than everyday life, you know? It changes your, you know, you have some drinks, you get lightheaded and you feel this and you do drugs, you get high and you feel this. And But um, the addiction probably came, another uh, really important factor was I didn't like myself and uh, I, I had self-hatred, a root of it. Since I was a kid, I just looked in the mirror and I was like, I don't like you. I got rejected from girls young and and a lot of my friends were like the popular good looking ones and I was like the weird one that, you know and stuff like that and so I think being high took that pressure off and like made me just feel like I could just be goofy and have fun and and so and then it turns into addiction because you get addicted to being someone else <laughs> right yeah. 
So I think a lot of that factors in. Who was that someone else for you? Um, I don't know. I it was just the confident one, I guess. Someone else. It was like a, a confident person that I could snort in or or drink in or something like that. You know. Yeah. So I'm just kind of thinking as I go. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Uh, from what I've understood of that story, that confident one that you sort of became was actually someone that you realize you know, it's not really fulfilling in any way yeah. shape or form obviously it has a huge amount to do with with your daughter and, and an understanding of life for you is hey actually i think there's something different that i'm actually wanting in my life yeah um could you share with us i suppose that those moments of um life change that occurred and and for me it, it's you know, there's a faith aspect that gets to this but it starts with your daughter yeah she was uh she was my heart man when she was born it was just she was me and my wife's just dream because we had another child that uh, we gave up for adoption when she was 19 and I was like 22. Mm. And so we had no money and we lived in a shack with a bunch of guys and we had no place for a baby. So um, we found parents for her to, do, to adopt, but we stick together all these years later and I got success with the band and she got pregnant and we were so happy. Oh my gosh, we can maybe just replace some of that pain of losing that child to giving our way for adoption and having our own. And so she came in the world and then our, our addictions were under control for a long time. We were like, we're going to change our lives. And then they came back. And then, uh, so through the addiction, I was just like, Oh my gosh, I need to do, I need to be a good father. My parents were made mistakes, but they were, they weren't like drug addicts, you know, they were just, my dad was a drinker, but you know, they, they, they were a lot better than I'm doing. So years went by, years went by, and, and when her mom left our family and left me to, uh, with with our daughter, that's when I was like, I got to get it together. But instead of be, becoming reborn into this new person I wanted to be, I was trying to do it without Christ. So I was just like, uh, just running around in circles. And so I went the other way. I went. I, I loved my child, and when I came back home, I was always drinking or doing drugs, but I would just, like, mask it and be, like, the fun dad, you know? And um, and then I'd hire nannies when I left the road. So when I came back um, after I, I d- dove so much deep into uh, drugs with all the drugs I mentioned before, and I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm the biggest loser father of in the on the planet right now, and so I need to get clean. And I went to rehab, tried to get clean, and uh, next thing you know, I find myself going to church with a guy that I knew and respected because I thought like uh, church people were like Ned Flanders from the Simpsons because they're so like awkward, you know? Yep. And so, but this guy built monster trucks and hot rods and he went to church and I'm like, I'm going with him. And I went there and I heard about Jesus and that uh, Christ. So I'm, I'm sitting here trying to drink, right? My whole life, I'm trying to drink and do drugs to become this other person that this confident me or whatever. And I just, I, I realized now that I look back that I met this person, Christ, who come and live inside of me, who I can be like one with him. And so I don't need all these drugs and masks and everything anymore because he's given me that. Mm. So that's what happened. And it's 14 years and it's worked for me. Yeah, it's incredible. Know? And, uh, but, but I'm not the churchy type of guy. I'm definitely, uh, I'm in a heavy metal band. There's a lot of uh, people partying around me every day. Um, not hard drugs, and I can't see hard drugs. I yeah. just, I wouldn't do them, but I just don't want to be around them. Yep. But there's always people drinking, and, you know, and uh, so that's my world. I'm yeah. not really like to go to church uh, yeah. every day type of guy. Share your brand, your event, your message. Across 90 Christian radio stations and major cities in Australia and New Zealand by sponsoring Towards Understanding, hosted by Clayton B. Ellen. More than 210,000 people tune into Towards Understanding each week. And with just one sponsorship, you'll reach this immense engaged audience. Find out more about this exciting and unique opportunity now on the sponsorship page at positivemedia.com.au. One of the things that I, I, I love about your story is that you are willing to sort of say, hey, um, when I had this moment with, okay, my life's going to be committed to Jesus now, things didn't just instantly fix. Right. Um, it, it feels like there's this um, 
uh, sort of idea that we seem to put out in Christianity overall, well, do this and everything's going to work. Um, but it didn't for you. It was a journey. It was part of it. But now you are getting to that place. You, you are in a place where you can say, well, it was worth it. I mean, I've yeah. heard you talk about that, 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 that hard, that, that struggle, that journey is actually worth it. Yeah. And um, I always tell people, like, the biggest thing about this whole story is Christ is very, very, very real. He's, he's alive, and he'll come to you and show you that he's alive. And so that was the biggest thing for me. And so he showed me how it really was by, by letting me feel a peace that surpasses all understanding and a, and a contentment that I never had. For like a year, I was good. And then it was like he was, you know, without words, he was just leading me to this and speaking to me about, hey, there's some things inside of you that have never been dealt with and we're going to go through a season of uh, pain now yeah. and you're going to what do psychiatrists do you know you go and see a shrink they they talk about your childhood the, the wounds of your past you know your upbringing that's a lot of what happens and so that's what i feel god was doing with yeah. me dealing with the old issues yeah. and i went yeah to just to go along with what you said there's years of of setbacks and difficulties and I chose to stay in relationship with Christ, though, because I knew something good would come, and I was right. A lot of that seemed to be as well with your daughter and that, that journey for her that, well, you were going through an experience, but she wasn't necessarily going through that experience no. either. Um, and that seems to be in a much better place now too. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's like night and day. Me and her, we talk better now. We communicate better. We we joke around a lot. We always have so much fun, but... um. Sometimes I can joke around too much and I uh, need to communicate better, but we're getting so, she's almost 21. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I'm so grateful, man, because I, I could have just given up and said, this, this is too hard. Like this, I know God is real, but his, there's too many weird Christians out there. And like, I got burned by these Christian, so-called Christian businessmen and everything. And so I could have just walked away from it all, but I decided to see, stick around just to see what kind of, good would come out of it and now life's not perfect but things are really amazing yeah in every way business yeah. family um just uh my inner life i just have peace and my depression is is minimized everything yeah uh, two final questions for me one about you and one i suppose for everybody who's listening okay um we talked about that confident man um, are you living that confident man, that the, the real confident man now? Is that still a journey, a pathway? Like there was this sort of fake confident man that you, yeah. the drugs gave you. Is there a real confident man that's there or is that still something that you're searching for? I'm so confident now. I mean, I do have some insecurity still. We're all human, right? But I'm so confident and comfortable in my own skin. Like I just sit here and talk with you and, and earlier we were, in, you know, talking in front of a crowd and, and, uh, I would have been like so scared to do interviews and everything. And I do get nervous a little bit sometimes, but I just feel so confident in who I am that I'm just like be myself. And uh, so I am living 100% the confident person that I always wanted to be right now. Yeah. So I love how it came back full circle. That's with awesome. That. <laughs> Good, that's, good job. That's so, so <laughs> cool. Hey, uh, final question. And it's for somebody who's listening right now and, you know, maybe – well, I'm going to guess that almost every single person who's currently listening hasn't been a, a part of a famous rock band and hasn't actually probably you know walked a journey that's exactly <laughs> right. like yours. yours. But um, everyone who's listening has gone through something that is uh, really painful, something that perhaps is shameful for them, something that maybe has meant that they're a part of their fake confident man. Right, they, yeah. they, want to, they want to walk into that, that confident man or woman that they can actually really be. Um, your advice to them, whether it's a, an addiction of, of what people think about me, an actual addiction, whether it's, a, you know, I, I need to understand and explore something a bit more about life. But what would you be encouraging them to do? That you can get past your self-hatred, your, your guilt, and, um, and you can forgive those that have done you wrong, maybe your parents, maybe uh, whoever it may be. Because, you know, when you hold on to unforgiveness, you're holding that person close to you that hurt you and you're saying like in their face, you're never going to forgive them. And they're just right there in your face the whole time because you're holding them there. And then forgiveness is like you let go of their collar while you're shaking them. 
and you're just like, okay, you did me wrong, but I forgive you. I let that go, you know? So I would tell them that. And then I would reiterate to everybody that Christ is very, very real. And he'll come and help you forgive yourself and forgive others and get the healing you deserve because life is too short to carry all that, people. Brian Headwash, thanks so much for your time. Yes, thank you. It was an honor speaking to you. From the band Corn, Brian Headwelch has been my guest here on Towards Understanding.